Hello everyone, it's Christian Redman, and today we're going to go over the planetary aspects that are surrounding us and affecting us for this upcoming week of April 30th through May 6th. And this week, it's interesting because what we're doing is we are paying uh, attention to certain aspects that happen in the calendar year and what's going on around us as opposed to actual astrological events that are happening this week. So it's an interesting week of standing back, um, introspecting, retrospecting, and looking to where we need to light fires in our life, I suppose is the best way to put a synopsis to this week ahead. And which is good, you know, we're focusing on a lot of light moving forward, which is very much needed because we've gone through a lot of darkness, I feel, in the past couple of weeks, but especially last week, as we were leading up to the Scorpio full moon, which is actually happening tonight. So, of course, people are still feeling it, and they may very well be feeling that as well this week. I feel like the effect of the full moon was more last week as opposed to continuing throughout this week, but everybody's different, especially if you're a Scorpio or a Taurus, because it's going to really be impacting you uh, the most. But but what this full moon does, like any full moon, it draws out the negative in our life and it tries to bring completion to cycles uh, that no longer serve us. Now, when we have the Scorpio full moon uh, this time every year, it focuses on the area of the 8th house and Scorpio that astrology embodies. And that can be an interesting little slippery slope, that Scorpio um, in 8th house. It deals with the darker aspects of life and death and metaphysics and the thin line between all of them um, and taboo subjects that most people don't like talking about. So it's a very uncomfortable area and it gets thrown upon us at that time of the full moon. So all those Scorpio energies come to the surface, right? The full moon is drawing them out just like the tides in the ocean. It's drawing them out. So those energies are... Uh, we'll do light side and shadow side, a little mixture of both of them here, but we'll start with um, shadow side, right? Because that's what the full moon is, bringing those things to the surface so you can't ignore them anymore. Shadow side of it, we're dealing with other people's money and debts. So this cycle of completion is shining a light big time. When I say shining a light, that means where the sun is at in the sky in Taurus. Taurus is very much concerned with financial security and stability. So as it pings and pongs against that Scorpio moon, it's shining a light on where we have cracks in our financial health, as well as the debts that we owe to others and how that's impacting our life and what's going on in our life now. Maybe you can't get a loan because credit score is too bad because of outstanding debt. Um, it, maybe you just owe a lot of money <laughs> and that's coming to the surface. Um, those types of things happen at this time frame because that's what Scorpio deals with. More Scorpio energies we've got dealing with um, death and loss and crisis and trauma. Those things fall under that category as well. So maybe this was a week where you lost something in the grieving process of that loss or maybe actualizing that it's time to end something in your life, whether it's a relationship, a job, um, a bad habit. That's another part of it, too, because Scorpio deals with more taboo areas like addiction. Addiction falls in that category as well. So this may be a week where you recognize some substances or things that you're uh, surrounding yourself with, people that are around you that are sur surrounding themselves with, how it's making an impact on life and where that cycle needs to end. Um, power struggles. I guess we're focusing on all the dark aspects. <laughs> Here, but that's what the full moon brings out, right? Power struggles within ourselves, maybe towards those addictions, maybe towards that debt. Um, power struggles within relationships, power struggles at work, you name it, right? Those things come to light thanks to Pluto, the ruler of um, Scorpio. But it also deals with uh, jealousy and possessiveness as well. That's the shadow side as well. Pluto and Scorpio is the most intense of all the water signs. And as a result, that intensity, that deep need for connection and closeness, when it isn't reciprocated or it isn't accepted, 
uh, can go to the shadow side of obsession and possessiveness and jealousy and all of those things that get pulled out when we are so deeply enmeshed and intertwined in something very important in our life. But the other side as well is that Scorpio deals with not only the life and death process and the transformation that results from that, but it's also about the psychological health that we have as well. So maybe this is a, this is a week where you're recognizing certain patterns that you're ready to change and it's made itself very clear that mm, this is where I need to do a little spring cleaning on the inside in this mind and, and remove toxic thoughts and patterns that no longer serve me. Maybe it's something more not so intense, right? Maybe this full moon drudged out inside of you like, I got to get rid of these 6,000 Tupperware containers I don't need or the extra set of dishes or all those clothes that don't fit me no more, whatever it is. It was one of those weeks that said, let's purge what we don't need because when we let go, that's the thing. That's what Scorpio means. When we let go of these things under all of these categories, that's when something new in the renewal can happen. And that's where the remainder of this week is really focused on, is finding that light in the fire from the transformations that are resulting from what you're willing to let go of. All right. One of the things that we're going to be dealing with this week is the Celtic festival that has been celebrated for years and years, ancient festival. Uh, the Celtics started it and it carries on even still. It's called Beltane. Beltane. I want to make sure I said that right. What this festival is, is it celebrates the midpoint between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. Now, think back to ancient times, okay? Very reliant, our ancestors were, on the cycles of the moon and the sun in terms of planting and uh, for sustenance, right? This is what they determined everything from was the gods of the sun and the moon and the earth and the sky. Now, when we go into the spring equinox every year, that's when we have equal points of daylight and darkness in the day. And as such, it's a time when we do a checks and balance system in ourselves to look at the light and the dark in ourselves and see where that balance may be out of whack, all right? And where we need to make the changes, right? Now, as we go into the summer solstice, the summer solstice, of course, is the time when we are in the summertime, things are growing, the fertilization process has happened, plants are growing, our fields are starting that process. And as such, the summer solstice represents the time when the sun is at the highest point in the sky and we have the most amount of daylight in the day, the beginning of the summer season. Now, in astrology terms, see, before when the spring equinox, we were dealing with light and dark in its equal parts, right? Because we have to have dark to have light. We got to have light to have dark. It, it works like that, yin and yang, right? Male and female energies. We'll get into that in a minute here. But in the summer solstice, we're focusing more on when the sun is dominating the energy of that time. And in astrology, the sun represents you. You are the sun to your universe. Everything revolves around you. And that's not selfish to say you're here really for your soul's purpose. So that shines at its greatest point. We are at our happiest at that time. We are shining our brightest at that time. And we should be taking stock of how wonderful we are and where we've come in that time to be able to shine with confidence at the time of the summer solstice. Now here we are though at that midpoint, right? We're between taking stock and shining in our brightest. So we're in the middle point right now. And as the Celtic folk looked at it, they saw this as the best time of year to plant those seeds in the ground for the time when the growth really starts happening at the time of the summer solstice. So when we look at it like that, think of it, we're planting physical seeds, absolutely. So if you wanna plant some seeds in the ground, yo, put your morning glories. <laughs> seeds in the ground right now. This is a great time to do it, you know. But it's also metaphorical seeds, seeds of hope, seeds of um, new beginnings, things like that. This is going to be a wonderfully powerful week to do that. Um, the, the word Beltane, Bel represents fire, light, um, and that's exactly what this week is trying to do. Get that fire out from us. It's a fire festival. And in, in uh, terms of elements, fire is that energy in us and it helps us find our passion, drive, 
our determination, what lights our fire on the inside. And we need that to move past all of these difficulties right letting go of things that have been happening over the past several months especially came to focus over the past couple of weeks leading up to this full moon the universe makes it known right in its various ways what has to go and now we find that fire and that confidence and that courage to move forward right to bring our hopes and dreams into fruition right we want to plant those seeds and we want to let them germinate and see where that brings us at the time of the summer solstice in june Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. And as I said before, remember the equinox represents the balance of male and female energies. This Beltane festival was a homage that would be paid to the god, the god and the goddess, right? The goddess of the earth and the god of the sky, and it represents the merger of the two of them together. And as such, we all kind of look at that to see where we have that balance in ourselves and our male and female energies and those polarities that run through every single one of us. Male energy is acting on something, doing something. But the female energy is knowing that it needs to be done. Having that instinct that says, man, I need to make these changes. And then the male energy comes in and it gives us that confidence and strength and the determination that says, you know what, we have to make this happen. It's not just about thoughts. We have to put these into action. That also comes into light this week under the power of this interesting and wonderful ancient festival that still carries through and is still as potent and vital to us even in modern time. So another thing, too, speaking of that Mars and that male energy, Mars, 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 I'll tell you what, this is a big week because out there NASA is launching the InSight mission. That happens on May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens with that, right? They're going to be sending out a new mission on there. And it's so cool because it's not about prodding and going about on the outside of Mars to see what's going on. They're finally going on the inside to see what the internal structure of Mars is like. To really get in there and see what makes that puppy tick. And I think that's very cool because... Mars has to do with that fire and that energy and that action of doing so. I think it's a wonderful sign from the universe this week as well for us to probe our own inner Mars. Sorry about that. My Kindle kind of puked out <laughs> for a second. Hopefully I have enough memory here. Uh, so let's do that this week, right? Let's find deep inside uh, where our inner Mars, what the inner workings are of ourselves. We don't have to figure it all out, but it just to at least pay homage to it, right? and bring that inner fire to the light. When I say inner fire, that is our confidence. That's our ability to stand up for ourselves when we need to, when we need to assert ourselves. Uh, it's time to take stock of maybe, instead of having troubles asserting ourselves, maybe when that fire gets too much of us and we kind of bullshot over others. Maybe there's a little too much standing up and too much telling others to do. Because, you know, Mars is a warrior and it wants to go, go, go. And it will push through anything with a fiery blaze. Think about that, though, in terms that can burn the others around you. So this may be a week when you step back and go, hmm, maybe it's not a matter of me standing up. Maybe it's a matter of me backing down and letting others stand up and have their say as well you know, wherever that falls in. But it's also about the passion that we have, the drive that we have. Uh, last year was really a year that brought into focus what it was that wasn't making us happy, right? Where we wanted changes to happen in our life, really brought to the focus. And now this is a year where those things really start to take concrete form. So maybe this will be a week where you really focus on what the life purpose is, where the new direction is going and where you need to blaze those trails of your own as well so that's really the energy that's going out there in the sky um i think maybe when we have this this wonderful festival that is happening this week on cinco de mayo think about that out there in the sky um breathe that air that represents the male energy that fills us with the intention of doing and then ground yourself even if you could be barefoot at this time outside um planting that feet into the ground and make stable changes. Imagine yourself like a seed being planted into the ground, ready for these new beginnings and what you want that life purpose to really start representing and changing all these things that have been building up. 
breathing it in and being a part of this cycle of the universe out there way in the skies think about this wonderful opportunity for us to learn more about how mars was created four billion years ago how our solar system was created how the earth in turn was created all these things that we'll learn from this insight mission that's going to be launched this week new changes new beginnings right wonderful things that are happening and lighting a fire within us so be a part of it just know that you're a little part of that breathing it in and planting yourself and making your changes as well so let us do a reading now right pull it in together and this week i've also pulled another deck of cards i pulled the life purpose deck very rarely do i use these i'm a pretty um standard girl when it comes to my cards i like my angel tarot cards but something inside of me and my good old guardian angel anticourt um i think is pushing me to pulling these this week because uh they deal with where our life is going and all these things that this festival is bringing out inside of us so let's start out pulling a stone right that's what i do to see what angel is around us because for you that know, I don't really talk to the spirits. I feel them, but there's some lock inside of my third eye that doesn't want to see them or hear them because it would freak me out. <laughs> Legit, yo. So what I do is I have worked out a system with the angels, and they say, okay, with this stone, this angel or this angel or energy is attached. So let's see who's around us this week, kind of helping us light fires, take stock in ourselves and the male and female energy within us as well and helping us to move forward into light oh my gosh there's the most hilarious thing out there i just pulled this it's oh my gosh i wish i could show you i think i'm going to try to show you this hopefully you can see it there is this squirrel over here sun tannin can you see him where is he dang it he's up towards the top oh darn it now this is not even worth it not even worth it because you can't see them. Oh, it's the most hilarious thing. There literally is this squirrel sun tanning out there. And it's cracking me up on the roof of the neighbor's house. Oh, my gosh. Well, just know it's funny. Okay. So, in that time frame, I pulled the stone of grandma. <laughs> grandma energy. Um, so, know that grandma's around you. Okay. Maybe grandma wasn't around when you were alive. But just know she's always. Whoa there. Wow. Wow. My Kindle literally just shut off and restarted right when I said that. Ah, Grandma is around, right? Love and nurture and acceptance and understanding. And hopefully I got enough time here. <laughs> My, I have like zero storage. But know that Grandma's around, right? She's bringing that energy to, to keep you safe and help you feel these energies that are, are going on this week. And I feel like I just got to pull this card here and see what Grandma's got to say. For all of us right with all the infinite wisdom and knowledge and intuitive energy <clears throat> let's see four five i feel like i have to do it seven times six time to decide oh <laughs> okay grandma we got you she's getting us rocking and rolling make a decision based on your heart's true desires Wow, that is quite a grandma thing to say. Can't you imagine hearing that from her? What makes you happy? Hmm? What makes you happy? And another thing, too, that's around there, if you can see, all of that surrounding this girl in the middle are numbers. And that's how the spirit world talks to us. That's how grandma talks to you, right? Repetitive numbers that you see. I see 44 everywhere and the multiples of 11, you know. But how do they talk to you? There's a wonderful site called Sacred Scribes. Go to that one, um, sacredscribes.com, I believe it is, or sacredscribes.org. And when you look at that, look at the one that says um, the numbers and the index of the numbers. It has every combination of number on there. Look at that repetitive number that keeps coming through, and you will see what message Grandma and your guides have to say. All right, just pay attention. Just listen to what the universe is saying this week. And you'll be guided in ways that obviously help you make decisions on how and what to leave behind and how to have the strength to move on according to what your heart tells you you need to do on your path. I think this is a beautiful message um, in a lot of ways. And I thank the universe for that. And I thank you for watching as you do every week. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.